He did a roll. When 29-year-old ramp worker Richard Russell stole a passenger plane and took off from Seattle Friday evening, professional pilots like my brother Bill quickly focused on what was happening. Sad number one, sad for the family and sad for the uh, employees and, and pilots of Horizon in Alaska. My brother has 4,000 hours in jets, flying A6s and then F-18s. He also flew for Horizon, leaving just this last June for another job. And he flew that stolen jet 11 times. He believes the ramp worker had training. Remarkable feat of aviation skill, and I do not see a way that he could have done that without flight training in a twin-engine airplane of some sort. During the hour-long flight in the stolen plane, Russell, the ramp worker, flew upside down and did barrel rolls. And then to perform some of the maneuvers that he, that he did and talk on the radio at the same time uh, led me to believe that he's, he has to have had some training. When you do maneuvers, like we do in fighters all the time, barrel rolls, uh, fly inverted, you're under a lot of G. That does a weird thing to your brain if you're not used to it. Jim Hummel is another retired airline pilot. But obviously the guy had some skill in order to get it, get it off the ground. He thinks it is possible that Russell learned those skills through computer simulators. He wonders why more was not done to keep the plane from taking off. They might have attempted an interception on the ground with vehicles and uh, not necessarily personnel, but vehicles of some sort to stop, to stop the movement of the airplane. But that did not happen. What did happen is Portland-based F-15 fighter jets screamed up to Seattle on full afterburner arriving in just minutes, likely with weapons ready and orders to shoot down the jet under certain circumstances. And then they waited patiently. It's that something my former a, Navy pilot brother said shows their discipline. And there's rules of engagement uh, which allow a shoot down only from the very highest authorities. So for them to be monitoring that and just stay where they were, ready to take action if required, uh, was remarkable. It's, it's exactly what you expect from a professional military. SeaTac leaders are now researching what, if anything, they can do to make their operational security even tighter.